Good morning everyone. We woke up right there between the olive trees. We got woken up by the farmer. He came to us and uh, he just like greeted us and said that it was no problem that we were right there. Uh, he said, as long as my olive trees are fine, I'm good. <laughs> olive trees are considered holy in the Islam. So, you know, you can't be against them or something because that's considered haram. But sleeping inside them was no problem. It was actually very cold in the night, uh, only five degrees, I think. I woke up shivering a few times, but once the sun came up, it's better. Right now it's good, actually, it's good temperature. It's very peaceful here. I prefer this more than the city, wow. Oh yeah, the farmer, I was talking to Rico and he said like, uh, do you want me to uh, make some tea for you or make some breakfast? He said that we don't want to keep him uh, busy. I don't know, maybe he still bring some tea, he insisted on it. So that would be actually very nice, some tea right now. Because uh, I'm still a bit cold from the night, some hot tea will warm me up. It's crazy to think that we're in a desert right now, because look around, it's so much green. The reason that there is so much life, it's just because that one river, that one small river. And you can see that the farmers want to stretch like the green area as far as possible by like irrigation, artificial canals between their fields and crops, so that they still can provide enough water. Ah, oh, some big mountains in the distance. And so this is where we are now. And when you zoom out, you can see that all the rest of this is just like desert and lonely green stretches just where the river runs. <laughs> he actually came. That's so nice. So right now we're eating olives from the tree where we slept in. It's his olive oil, he made it himself. And these are his olives from these trees here. Very authentic. How is the food? No comment needed. Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> Salavi. Ah, so much treasure everywhere. I know it's like impossible to clean everything up, and this doesn't really help. Ah. It's mountain water. Coming from the mountain all the way over there. My socks are as dirty as my feet, so I'm just going in. Oh, that's nice. This used to be a very big river, but now it's only that small stream. I don't know if it snows on the mountains, maybe later in winter, if the snow melts, all the water comes through here, or that the river is just drying up every year. If we catch a train, we're gonna be riding here, over the bridge. And all the way to there, around the mountains, to Gerada. So yeah, Gerada is a town in the Sahara Desert. The train also terminates there because there is like this electricity plant over there and they transport the coals from the port all the way to the plant to burn them and create electricity. So yeah, that's the purpose of this route. Trains don't run every day and yesterday there was a train so I don't know if there is going to be a train today. It's how much the factory demands. Sometimes they are good on stock, sometimes they're not. I hope they don't have enough coal and that a new train is gonna come today. I'll see about that.
Right, there's the yard or the station actually. So far, no trains.
the city right now. These guys are gonna get off here. It's their stop. They're not gonna ride all the way to Gerada. Um, so in the pants, the locomotive driver like humped, and then like he he did like this, like with his arm outside the window, telling us to go down. So he knows that we're on. I don't know if uh, there is gonna be waiting anyone in the next city because maybe the driver doesn't care. But we also got seen by a few of these uh, rail road crossing workers and the station guard. These guys said it is no problem. They just like still the pride. So you know maybe there's no problem. But uh, yeah, maybe we might have some trouble in the next city. I don't know. We'll see how they uh, react to us being on the train. Okay, it looks like we're not stopping over here, so I think it's fine. down it's getting pretty cold but I put my warm clothes on so I'm fine right now I think the train didn't stop at the station where those guys needed to get off so I think they're coming with us all the way to Gerada it's like two hours more and then we're there if the train doesn't stop because right now we're stopping I think it's the same we can do the last bit in daylight because it's really nice through the desert mountains but hey I mean we saw so many beautiful things I'm definitely satisfied and stop yeah you can see some lights in the distance that's Ujo right there our crane is now gonna take a sharp curve and join another crack which leads straight into the desert over there oh man so far freight riding over here it's been amazing so we actually passed two stations and then we also stopped in another station but nothing happened like we got seen by so many personnel and by the driver but they just don't give a fuck they just let us ride the driver was just like keep your heads down you know don't go too crazy like be careful and all these people guarding the level crossings they just waved back at us so different from what i'm used to in europe even different from the Balkans, this is like next level chill. But it's like in this part of the country, when you go more to the south, it's gonna be harder. It's like double track, electrified. Uh, they're not used to people riding trains there. So yeah, two hours more, and then we'll be at our destination.
We're having a slight inconvenience. We're basically in the middle of the desert and with engine troubles. The train stopped right here. It's a single track, no yard, no station, nothing. And you can see some lights in the distance, like you're not completely isolated from the road. First I thought uh, that there was just sand on the tracks because that happens often and that they need to shovel the sand away. Then I heard like the engine revving and the train is just like moving five meters and stopping again. It's not the best place to, <laughs> to get stuck. Let's see if they can fix the problem. This guy is also still on the train, sniffing glue the whole time from my back. <laughs> They're high as a kite. Well, now that the train came fu to a full stop, this is bothering me. Their backlight, it's like hanging on the side. Should be at the back. There we go. That's better. Okay, so the crew came and they sent brakes on all wagons. I think they're gonna disconnect and um, just, you know, drive further what I was fearing already. I don't know what the plan is now. Maybe we can ride on the engine with them. Maybe we need to walk. We'll see. to each other they said like we pulled me with pain off of the coals they were so surprised when I told them I came from Brazil I want I think it's go time right oh wait. ah they cut the train in half yeah <laughs> Right, we're driving again. The two crew members stayed with the rest of the wagon. Uh, no, it's only pulling like half of the train because there was a problem with the engine. They decoupled like the other half of the train. The crew was very friendly and they were very surprised to have a European on board. I can hear them talking to each other like, dude, we have a European on our train. They were so surprised. But they were nice and uh, they let us ride. They just said like, this wagon is better. And uh, yeah, now we're going to Zirada. We also said that I could ride it in the engine if I want. <laughs> but I, I said like, no, it's fine on the train. I'm just like, okay, I guess. Hi. Let's go. Up to us. Hola, hola. Merci beaucoup. Cousin. Cousin. À la prochaine. Salamat. Het is gewoon gelukt, joh. Het is gewoon gelukt. This was such an awesome ride. We actually saw the two engines, the two locomotives, uh, going back to probably pick up the rest of the wagons. Ah, oh, very tired. 
also very satisfied. A lot of props to the driver for actually like letting us ride and also giving us the opportunity to choose. He was like, do you want to ride inside the locomotive or do you, oh, this is the police station, oh shit. <laughs> wow. Uh, do you ride, want to ride in the locomotive or do you want to ride on the wagons? So I was like, I want to ride on the wagon. I was like, okay, fine. And then like he stopped before the art. And also like the train stopped a few more times. When he was ready to depart again, he honked to signal us that we're gonna go. It's so nice that they're just okay with us riding. They get it. So yeah, we're so dirty from the call again. It's also really cold. I don't know if we're gonna sleep outside, but I also don't know if there's a hotel or something here. We're gonna settle, chill, and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do. We made it. Alright, good morning. This is Girada. This town is actually the end of the line, the end of the desert line. There is another desert line which goes to Boarfa, but that line isn't in use anymore. The mine over there is still operational, but it's all done by trucks. We still want to train up in this country though. For that we have to go to the south of the country, because from there there is phosphate transport all the way to the sea. But yeah, it's still quite far from here, so we have to hitchhike to there. I think with car it's like an 8 hour drive. There is a faster way which goes back towards the sea and then along the big cities like fast. But we want to ride uh, through the desert. We want to ride the long route all the way through the back country of Morocco. It's a bit longer but also more interesting I think. I just hope there is traffic because you have like this road which runs through the desert for an hour with not a single village. And I hope people are willing to take us. Well, the second thing I'm actually pretty sure people are willing to take us, especially when we are in the desert. They're not gonna leave us stranded. We're gonna eat and then we're just gonna start hitchhiking. Not gonna spend like any more time in this town. I don't think it's really interesting. And it's like this kind of town where everybody looks at you. So yeah, I think it's like every town from now on until the big cities. But hey, nothing that I can do about it. Look at this breakfast. We have eggs, tea. This is like a milkshake, oil, bread, just water, so many things. And it costs 22 dirham, which is like two euro. The goal for today is to get to Utet Al Hej. It's a city, I think it's like a three hour drive. This is the road, there isn't a lot of traffic, but all the traffic that goes here has to go in that direction. Maybe if we're lucky, we find somebody drives to that city because it's the first biggest city after this one it has like 30,000 uh, inhabitants so yeah it's the biggest chance they're actually going there instead of some smaller village along the way but if they go to some smaller village along the way we just get out there and continue hitchhiking until we get there okay. Assalamu alaikum. Salam, Salam. Yeah, hey, hey. Oh, oh. Oh, look at this. Hi, right, he stopped here. He offered us drinks. He's a really nice guy. And now we're gonna try to hitchhike from here. But we sat here for 10 minutes and there's like no traffic. It's gonna be hard, but just one car is all we need. So we got dropped off in literally the middle of nowhere. 
there is nothing around but these people needed to go to here to a small village and we need to go to there there were some fast nice cars that passed us but none of them picked us up it's more of the the, the old cars with already people inside who are like willing to take us would be cool to have some fast mercedes because like look at this road you can literally drive as fast as your car allows you to drive but yeah i'll take anything i'm actually also hoping for a truck ride in the back of a truck like we did in bdnsa yeah i really hope we uh we catch a truck because trucks go far they don't go to like just the next small village they probably take us all the way to our destination it's so quiet here I don't actually mind chilling here for an hour. We stopped to pee. Oh, this is so sick. These guys took us. Literally, we were driving on this road for one hour now and we didn't see a single car. We we're so lucky that these guys took us. They're going all the way to the place you want to go, so it's amazing. <laughs> Alright, we made it. Um, the guys who drove us invited us to have some tea and dinner with the family. And right now we're here with the kids. The other guys are gone now, they went to pick up a car or something. And uh, yeah, now we're just hanging out with their kids for like two hours now. That's fun. Hey! <laughs> Yes. All right, we're uh, going to a patch of trees now. We're gonna sleep outside. The family offered us to stay inside with them, uh, but they already gave us a ride of like three hours and food and tea, and it's too much. I don't know, it's, it's too much to ask from them. So we just decided to sleep outside. And yeah, it's also more fun to wake up tomorrow in nature. Right, looking for a spot right now. This is some kind of a farmland, but I think it's chill, you know. There are no crops or anything, just these boundaries and little irrigation canals. You can see that there is water flowing through here. Here it's dry. See, the biggest problem with sleeping in a hammock is that there is a lot of cold coming from beneath. And I have a mat in my hammock to prevent that. The Trico doesn't have a mat, so <laughs> he's actually harvesting bamboo to lay under him so he stays isolated from the cold. Good morning, everyone. It's nine right now. I slept okay. Um, I was waking up like every now and then because my head was outside my sleeping bag and it was really cold. Problem with this time of the year is that the sun only comes up at like 8.30. And like from six to eight, it's the coldest because the sun, oh, it's the first time I feel the sun. So once the sun is out, it's it's great outside, but when there is no sun, it's very cold. This is a desert and the ground doesn't hold heat at all. It really cools off here. Gonna scavenge some more bamboo. This shit actually burns very good, but it burns also very fast. So you have to go back the whole time. Um, there isn't really any other wood apart from these olive trees, but like I already told, they're considered sacred. So yeah, I'm not gonna like rip any branches off of them, just out of respect, you know.
Dale, biche. So we just ate. Now we're gonna head to the end of town to hitchhike further. It's a really nice town actually. And there are like a lot of sheep and goats everywhere. Like you can see right here. First ride took us 10 kilometers up the road. This guy actually dropped us off at a great spot. There is just a water tap here, which is very rare in a place like this. Brushed my teeth, washed myself, and now to wait for our next ride. It's really cool how all these little cities in the desert have like this very clear start and ending. And just this road, there starts the city, and over here, it looks literally just nothing. Oh, we finally made it. Oh, so there is a lake over there, it's like a two kilometer hike from here I think and we're gonna spend the night there and tomorrow we're gonna hitchhike further towards them to the city we want to go and from there on we're gonna train up to the coast I'm getting a bit tired of sitting in cars the whole time I really want to sit on trains so yeah tomorrow will be the last day of hitchhiking and then it's back to train up again oh but look at this we're in the Atlas mountain range it's very cold outside but so beautiful Very interesting ground over here. Look at that. This used to be all water. <laughs> all right, you reached the water. The water is there. It's called the Black Lake. Because the water, is... oh yeah, indeed, there's water in between here. Here it is. The shore of the lake. Oh, these blocks are floating. Look at this, I can push them in the ground. Oh, freak, I'm sinking. All right, gonna go back to the uh, solid shore. Whoa. So yeah, on the other side of the lake, there, is, uh, there are some trees. We're gone. Sounds like a combination of a bird and a cat. It's like a cat with wings. Guess we'll see them tomorrow when it's light. We walked for 15 minutes up this mountain and finally we found a flat space uh, because all of it was on such a steep gradient uh, that it was not possible to hang a hammock 
or like uh, lay down a sleeping mat. So yeah, we're pretty high. I think we climbed up like 200 meters or something. It's gonna be a sick view tomorrow. We're uh, gonna eat something now. We're really hungry. And then we're gonna gather some wood and start a fire. Right for dinner, we have some Moroccan bread with sardines in between and uh, some other things. So we got kicked out of the woods. It was very random, like suddenly we saw these lights approaching us in the distance and I was like scared a bit, you know, because they were like kind of running towards us. But then it turned out to be uh, forest guards or friends from forest guards or something. They saw our lights and they said that we're not allowed to stay there. They escorted us down and they gave us a ride to the next village and now we're inside this five euro rundown hotel room <laughs> instead of a forest because they said we couldn't stay there it was actually very hard to go there to go to the lake we really had to fucking hassle to go there because it's not like an easy place to reach and everybody said like oh you shouldn't sleep outside and so many people offered us to like sleep in their house and we were all like no no we can't sleep outside you know it's fine we have the equipment and shit <laughs> And then we finally get there, we get in the woods, we want to sleep outside and these three guys pull up out of nowhere, in the middle of nowhere and said like, uh, yeah, you can stay here. And now they dropped us off at the hotel, so. Oh man, this country really doesn't want us to sleep outside, I think. So random. Never got caught by forest guards. And now here, in this country where people don't even give a fuck. We were not supposed to sleep in the woods. Oh yeah, these guys also just pulled up on Adidas sneakers. So I was a little bit skeptic and very vigilant because I was like, dude, you're a forest guard and you just pull up on sneakers in the woods. But then I realized that's Morocco and it's not that weird that we're actually like that. Um, also, like, if they wanted to do something to us, they would probably just do it on the mountain in dark. So yeah, in the end it was fine, but still, it was a very weird situation. They came out of nowhere, it was so unexpected. I just wanted to fucking wake up at the lake. No, I'm here. I really just feel like some fucking bird who was like just captured and relocated to some kind of a reserve. Oh yeah, stay here, now it's safer, yeah. I hope this is the last time my free will will be undermined this trip. We're actually not so far from uh, Hudibya. I finally uh, managed to pronounce it right. Like the whole route we were saying like Kuhibja, Kuhibja and everybody was like, where the fuck is that? And then somebody just say like, oh, Kuripia. We're pretty close to it. It's like a two and a half hour drive, but there are so many roads splitting everywhere. So I think we're just gonna take a bus. It's actually the first town where there is a proper bus stop. So yeah, I think we're gonna take a bus for like 
probably five or ten dirhams, it's nothing, to Shuripya, the city with the big phosphate mines where there are a lot of phosphate trains running to the sea. Okay, now I'm gonna take a piss and then you have to like flush it with this, with this, with this thing, you know, just put it in like that. <laughs> yeah, I'd rather just be outside. Oh yeah, look. this is like, like Morocco has like top engineering everywhere. You open the door, it's like... Yeah. Oh wow. Oh wow, you can just go to the roof like that. See, that's the plus on like these cheap hotels, like you just can wander around. Oh damn, there's a Givenchy sweater. It's probably really expensive. <laughs> well, I take my words back, it is really great waking up here. There's the main street. There's the bus station. I'm gonna take a bus there. I hear something from behind this door. Oh, what? Somebody locked up a cat? Hey! Who locked you in here? What the fuck? Because somebody lives here. Oh, I just think I freed somebody's cat. Oops. Well, Godspeed to you, little buddy. 